Um, it's been, it's been, I feel like it's been a minute since we did one of these, uh, because last week was sort of a meditation episode, which a lot of really good feedback on that. Yeah. Baruch How's Hashem. the feedback? A lot of good feedback. Baruch good. Hashem. Baruch Hashem. People are, when they're getting ready for pause, it's a new platform to drop. So stay tuned for that. But on this week's episode, we sat down with an amazing, amazing fellow. What a year. Put this in the folder of hidden gem, you know, hidden gem. Not so hidden anymore because he's doing so much crazy work yeah, his work. project's not so hidden no not really but he was he might have not known his name yes yes he might have not not known his name and um but the impact i, I love it that someone had an idea and just a couple of years later it equaled over six million dollars worth of tzedakah is given to different organizations and, and literally things being done and on pace like as of now like four million a year yeah it's gonna go out that's amazing that's over amazing eleven thousand dollars each day yeah, going so to various organizations. This is this is the episode that we did with Dr. Jonathan Donath, um, and I hope Dr. You, J. Hope you will enjoy How are that. You, you might notice that if you're watching this episode, that you see Momo wearing a sweatshirt that's, oh. that says "Be Kind" on it. Interesting. Uh, Momo didn't get the memo that we didn't launch <laughs> our uh, our. Now he gives uh, me a sweatshirt. I'm going to put it on. It was cold today. We didn't launch our movement yet, but coming in late October, this will be in the Meaningful Minute merch store. These be kind magnets will be given out in areas near you, probably outside grocery stores where there's a lot of traffic, and we're just gonna be promoting the heck out of kindness. There's a few a few people that got behind this. You know who you are. Um, I'm not gonna say names because I don't know. If, I don't know if they want me to say their names. <laughs> but definitely one of them is the Friedman family. Really appreciate them. You know, getting involved in making this happen. But he said right after saying, "Yeah, not, that to, he's say not to say names." But we we uh, we're, we're very excited to take on kindness, and it says on the sleeve over here, "We rise by lifting others." That's we do we, rise by lifting others. We do, and that's what kindness is all about. Um, speaking of kindness, so be kind. Yeah, be kind. So just be kind, because like, be kind, right? Be kind. Just be kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope you enjoy this episode with Dr. Jonathan Donath. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. Where are we, Momo? We're right, we're right here. We're right here right now. We're joined by Jonathan Donath. Dr. Jonathan Donath. Yes, we are. How That's are such, you, doctor? Did you do that starting thing? Yeah. We just, we, I did that starting thing around uh, 59 seconds ago. <laughs> Fantastic. You don't you don't do that as a you're a chiropractor, for those who don't know. You don't ever just like have guys people sitting down and be like You have that waiting room thing and you bring them in so it's hard to to jump, you know, hard to surprise them. It's hard to do the jump start. Hard to jump start. Yeah. I well, might call you Dr. J, by the way, for the duration. My cufflinks say Dr. J. Do they? Yeah. Okay. But Dr. J is a Philly guy. Ooh. Indeed. I'm a Minnesota guy. So Minnesota, like, first of all, you're not the first guest that we had from Minnesota. I'm glad you said that. I'm the third guest from Minnesota. Third? I knew I, I Robbie Monastery, so. man. And his son. Oh, Benny. Very deep. Wow, I didn't even think about that. I mean, three people on your podcast from Minnesota. It's a, it's a big uh, it's a trend. It's a big thing. It's a trend. What's Minnesota's it like? Minnesota's trending. What's it like growing up in Minnesota? I, I grew up in the five towns. <laughs> Minnesota is not that. It is very different than New York. It's much cooler. It's much cooler. And, he grew, and Momo, you grew up in Los, in Angeles, Los Angeles. So it's a yeah. major city, major city. Minneapolis is great. Uh, we, we, li we, live, we grew up Thank in a place called- Thank you for the Lakers, called, by the way. Say again? Thank you for the Lakers. Oh, of course. Mm. People don't realize what the Lakers came from Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of people that just listen and go- Phew. Yeah, everyone- like, Oh my goodness! People just pulled over the their car. They're yep. like, "What just Look happened?" It up. Yep, Minneapolis Lakers. You're welcome. Um, yeah, Minneapolis is great. It's uh, it's a small town called St. Louis Park, nicknamed St. Jewish Park because there's so many Jews there. And uh, I had a great upbringing. You know, uh, amazing parents and three siblings, and all we all transferred except for my parents who still live in Minnesota. My siblings uh, live in New Jersey, and um, my dad's a professor at University of Minnesota to this day. Really? Yeah. University of Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, you know, my, my dad did his, uh, did his PhD at MIT in Boston and met my mom there. And uh, my son and I give my parents a hard time say, if you could only have stayed in Boston, we'd have lots of championships. Mm. <laughs> Instead, we're struggling Minnesota fans trying to get anything. You know what? You guys are getting close. You guys getting are getting close, close right? Na Naki and I are both big basketball fans. So we, we have, we have we've had our basketball conversations. Many late and nights where we're discussing the Tim Worlds and what they're doing and their Naki's moves. Warriors and yeah. You're welcome for Andrew Wiggins. Oh, yeah. Thank God, by the way. That was... <laughs> 
everyone's right now. I know I'm going to get it. Naka's a Warriors fan. Oh, you bandwagon fan. Like I'm doing. Naka's, like the, been, Naka's been a Warriors fan for a long time. Yes. For the record. I'm doing like this smiling and nodding and like laughing to pretend that I know what you're talking about. That's that's the zone that I'm in right now. Okay, so Minnesota. Where were we? Talking about basketball again. <laughs> people, I feel like people hate when I talk about basketball on the podcast because people are like. Yet you continue to do it. <laughs> there are a lot of basketball podcasts, so I know I really should do one of those. Or not. Or not. Based on the or feedback. Or I should just getting. like just watch it and be quiet and <laughs> we'll, was like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, doc, you know me. Doc, Dr. Jonathan. Um so you mentioned you had a nice upbringing in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yep. There was no uh there's no Jewish high school in Minneapolis at the time. Now oh, there's really? Yakov and there's a Minneapolis Yeshiva, but so it came time to go to high school and my parents, you know, gave me the choice. They said we could send you to like a private private school and get you, you know, tutoring for Judaic studies or you can go to go out of town. My older sister uh, went to Frisch. She uh, lived in my aunt and uncle in Muncie. And so, but they had three kids of their own and there was not enough room for me. So, uh, or that's what they said, you know, I don't mm. know. And uh, I ended up going to Skokie Yeshiva and I spent four years in Skokie. It was, you even say it like the Chicago people, Yeshiva. Yeah, if you go to the Yeshiva, you have to say the Yeshiva. That just, nice. that's how it works. What's the top of a house called? A roof. Oh, okay. He was looking for the roof. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for the roof. No, I say soda. I don't say pop. Oh, really? Yeah. It's weird. Chicago people should not have such weird speech. They don't. They don't live that far. Like <laughs> I know. They're not. True. They're not far enough to be speaking the way Chicago. they're speaking. Chicago. Yeah, we're it's not, not we're, weird, dude. It's just their way to do it. Shul. It's different from yours. Shul. Yeah. You're from LA. How do you say? How do you say shul? I say shul. How do you say? How do you say soda? I say soda. How do you say r- roof? I get a lot of flack <laughs> for my long O's though. Like stop it. And golf, or LA and like the A's, the R's, you know. Or LA people just a little bit like, like, I don't know, like they're just, more mellow. They're chill. Yeah, yeah, they're much more mellow. They're it's much a, more chilled. It's in the water. They're not as in New York. Everyone's in a rush always, even if there's not like a pressing need to be somewhere. Everyone's just always moving very quickly, just to be moving quickly. And LA people have more time. They're more relaxed. It's different strokes. That's what they say. You ever been to Minnesota? I have been to, I've been there once. Really? Yeah. What'd you think of it? I Be think honest, it's awesome. It's a great place. Of course. Amazing place to visit. Winter or summer? It was not the winter. Good, good move. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota, for again, like just very briefly, bat my basketball again, I owned season tickets to the Minnesota Timberwolves when I was in 11th grade. Cause you know, I was running a little, a little side hustle between regions, you know? Okay. And uh, I was reselling them on StubHub and I remember the ticket rep would always call me and be like, Hey, uh, Nachi, you coming to a game? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like 15 <laughs> 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 and I live in New York, you know? And, uh, I never made it out to Minnesota I never made it to Minnesota, but I do dive with a few people from Minnesota. Ooh. Shlomo Spar. Okay. I know it's probably his father's Jonathan Spar. Shlomo Miller. Okay, Albert Miller's father. These are see, I'm a little old, and you got yeah. I know I'm forgetting maybe there's other people from Minnesota. I don't yeah, know, great but people. I just named like forty percent of the entire community. Maybe <laughs> it's bigger than you think. It's really? Than you think? Yeah. My I, in-laws davened in the Agudov Avenue L for many years. Rabbi Leaf and Rabbi Leaf. Ooh, so Minnesota. Ooh, yeah, That's right. After Rabbi Breuer. Rabbi Leaf is on daily givings rabbinical council. How are you? Speaking of daily giving, yeah. So you're you're a chiropractor. You're a doctor. That's your that's your craft. That's your day job. Um, did you always want to be a doctor? Is that something that, because I, when I was in, uh, I think 11th grade, 12th grade, I, well, I skipped 12th grade. So when I was in 11th grade, flex. The T4s are dropping like bum, flies bum, right now. Bum, 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 bum. Um, I wanted to go to law school and I got these LSATs books and everything and I just didn't do it. Did you have that passion when you were younger? Like, I want to be a I doctor. I did not. I did not want to be a doctor. Um, I mean, maybe when I was a kid for five minutes, you know, one of yeah. those things that came through your head and it goes out. Um, it was only after I went to Camp Ask. I was a counselor. Oh, really? I was a Camp Ask counselor for a couple summers. And it was there where I was like, okay, changed my mind. I was in Cy Sims in YU and uh, I was in the business school. And I decided, no, veer, veer left. And Camp I decided, Ask really changed your... Yeah, it changed my trajectory. Yeah, I was. it was just amazing helping people, also being in that environment and um and being in it and i just said okay i want to help people then it was really hard to decide what kind of doctor i wanted to become yeah um and i always loved sports i always loved playing sports watching sports everything but two sports i was like okay i could either be an orthopedic surgeon go to school for the next 15 years um and i heard about chiro- i was I'm one, I'm one of the few chiropractors that did not go to a chiropractor before becoming one 
You never went um, to a chiropractor. I had never before. gone. No, I mean, when I was looking into it, I visited a lot of chiropractor offices and I was like, wow, this is amazing. People would come in, like, bent over in pain and leave, like, smiling and hugging the doctor, going, like, yeah. this is amazing. It's a miracle. I couldn't, you know, I, I had one experience where this guy had come in and uh, I was it, was, it was in Minnesota. I was visiting my parents and um, I went, like, a mile from my house and I sat and I walked, you know, chiropractors are very good at letting people come and watch if you're interested in becoming mm-hmm. a chiropractor. So I did that. And this guy comes in and he was, like, totally bent over and he's like, my daughter's getting married. I don't remember if it was a week or two weeks. And he's like, I just want to be able to dance at my daughter's wedding. And um, and then I was I was there like the next time the guy came back and he was walking and he was like crying. He was so happy. He's like, I was able to dance at my daughter's wedding. I was like, wow, I mm. want to give that people, I want to give people that feeling. Wow. You know that what? Was, it's so amazing how like, if you zoom out, you look at everyone's like occupation and you just think like, yeah, they're just doing the thing. But like, you like take an accountant, you know, that's like the, I guess the most stereotypical boring job is an accountant, right? they're helping people achieve financial, you know, freedom sometimes. And they're hel- helping people, you know, like it's in every occupation, it's sort of how you look at it and how you frame it to what it is. Yeah. What are you doing under the surface? Yeah. My first cousin, shout out to Shlomo Drafkin. Uh, he's an allergist in Chicago and uh, he's 10 years older than I am. And he's like, Jonathan, if it's not your goal in life to be a medical doctor, then don't do it. And I was, I was on that path. I was pre-med and I was deciding and I was like, he, and now he's super happy. Mm. He's, you know, he's doing great. But, but at the time it was a struggle. He was like, you know, he was still finishing up his training. It's so long, so many years. I remember he had like three kids. He had missed, he said, I, I missed a lot of my kids, uh, big, um, big benchmarks, missing this one, walk this one, eat this for the first time, this one talk. And, and he's like, I have friends who are millionaires and I'm living in a three bedroom apartment. And you know, it's, it's struggle. And I, 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 I think that's a really good advice, especially I, when I speak to like women who want to become medical doctors, it's like, it's a long, hard road, you know? And so if it's your goal in life, you should do it. But if it's not, then there's a lot of other different careers of the medicine that you can help people. So believe it or not, the reason why you're sitting here today is not because you're a chiropractor, you know, although we can use some adjustments to be nice. <laughs> um, but that's, you know, chiropractor to meaningful people. It's not generally the path. You know, we'd be busy a lot if we had every chiropractor just on the show. There's something that you did that you came up with that sort of changed the world. Take, take us through how Daily Giving was born. And um, yeah, let's hear your story. Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity to, to tell the story. And thanks um, for bringing burgers, but I don't know if the cameras can see it. I know the people listening definitely can't smell it. But Jonathan brought, it's it's Matze Tsumgadali right now. And Jonathan brought us burgers that his son made. So shout out to your son. Eitan. I want to say his name is Eitan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Eitan. Eitan. My son is- How are you, dude, Eitan? How are you, He, he grills a mean burger, my son. You'll taste them later. They're yes, great. we will. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. So basically it happened about four years ago, and I, I had- Never, ever, ever thought I'd run a, a nonprofit. It was never the even an inkling in my mind. Um, I was very, very busy with my own clinic, and um, and that you know, I'd get home late already, and um, and I even really, truthfully, felt like I had found my Tofkid. Not everyone feels that they found their Tofkid, and I, I really did feel like I'd found my Tofkid. I, I get to help people get out of pain, and uh, and I feel that Hashem blessed me with hands and whatever the knowledge I, uh, to get people out of pain. And it's a really fulfilling. It's a great feeling, and um, and and you know, it's I get to make a kiddush Hashem every day. I live in Westchester in White Plains, and you know, there's lots of Jews there, but there's lots of you know, most of my patients are not Jewish, and sometimes I'm the only Jew they've ever met. And uh, you know, my wife and I talked about Aliyah for many years, but one of the, one of the things that like one of the negatives about Israel is that if you go to Israel, everyone you treat is Jewish. Like here, the opportunity, it's, the yeah. opportunity for kiddush Hashem that we get to make every day is so unbelievable, and I and it's something special that I love and I love doing. And I love, and and it's also amazing how many people tell me they chose me as a doctor because I had a keep on, or you know, they they say you know I trust I trust Jewish doctors. You know, wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really it's really incredible. So. I, 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 one night I had actually just listened to a, a shear, um, and, uh, I remember the shear was talking about how even small mitzvahs matter. And I went into my local Marv Minion, Young Israel White Plains, and I put a dollar in the box like we always do. And, um, at that moment, I just had this like epiphany thought that no matter how much money I give to charity, I still get a mitzvah for that $1. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how can I just guarantee myself the mitzvah of tzedakah every single day for a dollar? That was the thought that crossed my mind. And I remember literally struggling to have Kavana the rest of Marv because I was so excited <laughs> to go home and Google uh-huh. and see if like someone's doing this already. And so I ran home and I Googled it and I'm like going through and I, and I literally could not find another organization doing this. Huh. Um, and I immediately called up my website guy, Shaul Ken, and, uh, 
And I said, Shoal, what do you think of this idea? He says, great idea. I said, can you build me a website? He says, absolutely. So then I called my- Oh, it's good to have a website guy. Oh my called God. Yeah. Website Gotta guy. have a website guy. Shoal's the best. Of course. Yeah. And so- If um, Kirill, if Kirill is listening in Ukraine, placebo. <laughs> placebo. Placebo. <laughs> What did I say? Placebo. <laughs> that is great. Surly, please do not edit that. Please. Put subtitles, Surly, for the people who don't speak. <laughs> that was amazing. Polish, okay. Russian. <laughs> to a doctor, no less. He says, placebo. He's not a doctor. He's my website guy. <laughs> no, oh, with man. the doctor uh, present. Uh, you know, I was treating- Placebo is one of those story. Pills. I have a good placebo story. Uh, oh, my so God. So, one time I was treating a, a, a medical doctor who works at Sloan Kettering, and um, I treat a lot of medical doctors, which is unusual for a chiropractor, and- uh, this this uh, this guy came to me. Not everyone's gonna get this. This is the truth. This is what happened. So every time he'd come, he'd say, "Jonathan, it's in, it's unbelievable." Every time I come with back pain, the placebo effect it works every single time. <laughs> Mo got it. I, Mo I, got I, it. I still think placebo means thank you. Yeah. But um, <laughs> he said thank you every single time. That's so nice of him. <laughs> so. So basically, that's what happened. I I I, I ran home, and again, I I, yeah. I I called I called my website guy. I called my two other best friends, Rami Strasberg and Shlomo Wrestler, LA guy, and and I um I said, "What do you guys think?" They said, "Great." So we started meeting at their house, and we 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 became five hundred one c three. And um, I had this idea that if I get Rabbi Pesach Kron, one second sp- before before you take yes. it to Rabbi Pesach Kron. Okay, slow your it's, roll. It started with how do I guarantee myself? Right. Yes. Th- this was your desire. To give tzedakah on a daily, yeah, right, on a daily basis, yes. And I just want to compliment you immediately when you when you noticed that it doesn't exist. Your next thought was, "Let me create it so that it can exist for Meaning Instead of just making a direct quick pay a dollar a day for yourself to some organization. You got like, yo, this should be, this should exist for everyone. Yeah, you shifted to the claw mindset as opposed to just for your own personal observance. Of I just daily couldn't giving. believe it, it hadn't been done. And so I was like, this is, this is the idea that I, I, people think, oh, you know, are you so excited where you're at? And I don't want to jump to where we're at, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of where we're at. I'm happy where we're at, but I think we're Wait, literally we just get scratching the surface, <laughs> you know? So I'm not satisfied. I really thought we were going to get like a hundred thousand people. Like, let's go, you know? Not yet, not wow. yet. Yeah. Not so, so yeah, I, I, I really thought if I could get Rabbi Pesach Kron, who I never met, you know, but I listened to him all the time, the Torah anytime and the Magid and, and just mm-hmm. the voice of Torah anytime. I was like, if we can, if I can get Rabbi Pesach Kron to speak about daily giving the way he speaks about Torah anytime, I'm going to blow this thing up. So I, I remember my brother had just had his first boy and I was at his, at his bris and uh, Rabbi Kron's son, Eliezer, did the bris. So I asked him for his father's number and I remember calling him up and I, like my heart was literally beating out of my chest. I was so nervous. When I heard his voice, I was like, it was incredible. So yeah, I was so nervous. And um, Rabbi Kron is just the, 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 the doll of all dolls. It's Kleistrol Zadie. He is, he is Kleistrol Zadie, you know. And he is, he's just, it's, it's such a zechus that I feel like I've, I have built a relationship with him and I'm close to him. I just spoke to him at Rosh Hashanah, you know. And I told him the idea and he loved the idea immediately. And he said, okay, let's, we, do you, we have to get a rabbinical council together. We have to make sure people, you know, people don't know who you are. We have to, they have to know that they could trust that the money's going to go to the right places. I said, you're right. That's a great idea. So we, um, it was very quick, easy to figure out who, you know, Rabbi Leaf was one. You know, I grew up in Minneapolis. Rabbi Leaf's, you know, a huge Tamachacham and very well known. And Rabbi Leaf was on the short list. And uh, Rav Herschel Schechter, who was just, uh, just so, so well respected in, among all communities. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and I, I called Rav Schechter. That was another one. My heart was beating out of my chest, even maybe more. I was just like, I don't, you know, completely in awe speaking to Rav Schechter Shlita. Um, and uh, and Rav, Rav, Rav Shmuel Greenberg. And Rabbi Pesach Kron, that's our four. Uh, Rav Shmuel Gimmer is my Rav in my planes, and uh, huge Tamil Chacham. These all, these all should be meaningful people. Of course, uh, they all, they oh, all are, there's, there's so many meaningful people, you know, and um, and yeah, that's how it started. And uh, we 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 went live with the website in January 2019, and like you know, the that's ideas crazy. morphed. Like we started with like different ideas. Okay, we're going to give to a different charity every single day. And then, well, how do we choose the charities? And then, you know, we want we decided we want to have like a diversified portfolio of charities. We didn't want to just give to one thing. So that's one of the things we think people like about us is that you can give to people with cancer and you can give to those struggling with substance abuse. And we have a lot of poverty organizations and um, domestic violence and mental health and 
those struggling with infertility issues. I mean, we have a really wide breadth of organizations, uh, MS, you know, like there's just yeah. so many different things wow. that we're giving to. So for a dollar a day, you could really feel like you're supporting so many different of Clydesdale's amazing organizations. And that, and, that's, and that was sort of the idea, like to get as many people as possible to give their credit card. We charge you a dollar a day or we charge you $30 a month, maybe credit card fee as well. And in the beginning, like, was there a, an obstacle or something that you hit a roadblock and you're like, cause I know like when, when it comes to new ideas and there's that motivation and you're so excited and everything's going, 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 going. And then like, you're like, Oh shoot. <laughs> like I remember when I was younger, I had this idea and I like was running with it. And then I like Googled something I'm like, Oh my God, it already exists. Someone's doing it. It's, it's all to the trash. Was there a moment at any point in the beginning when you started daily giving that you're like, oh gosh, this is hard. There were a lot of moments. There were definitely a lot of moments. I remember just the other day in Rosh Hashanah davening, and I remember back so clearly four years ago, as we're just a few months from from launching the website, thinking I was so excited because everyone I told about what we were doing, so like, oh my god, it's a no brainer. I'm going to sign up. And so I really thought we'd have ten thousand people sign up like the day we started. Like the day you started, right? It was such a slap in the face. It was such a hard really? reality when it was like we went live and then like 40 people signed up it's like when we hit the button it's one of these sort of <laughs> go one second uh, it could be it could be a, it could be anything it might it might have cheered might be applause, I don't know yeah. or anything but it could be a child laughing right now it's also still on it is four three two one could have been the saddest little violin track. I can't wait to hear what you what you just did yeah I know all right onwards <laughs> so yeah it was it was really a struggle at first um that's and, yeah um, so you didn't you didn't you didn't um what's the line momo you didn't like expectations you didn't today's expectations are tomorrow's disappointments you didn't manage expectations yes you didn't manage expectations that's something i'm not great at you're like we're very idealistic that's, that's you're definitely like a weakness of mine is managing expectations something is good you brought up but you inspired me on another episode really you did yeah you said something like that you know where like what disappointment is a lack of yeah, today's of, expectations are right. tomorrow's disappointments right. momo's full of gems like oh, you're so kind. It's not just it. his glasses. He's got like these lines inside of him. It's just a wisdom, just a wisdom living in there. That's so nice of you. you see, they're not people are not coming for the meaningful people guess. They're coming to hear you. Let's be honest. <laughs> Erroneous. Yes. It's Momo like Erroneous. Momo's got honey in it. By the way, I do want to say and Momo's that head. I think you should have this no one has said this yet cuz I've listened to all your episodes. No one has really when I think Momo came on as an, as an, as your partner here, you should have an episode with Momo. Mm. I don't know if you've done it yet. If you've thought about it, but I don't know. Dude. Momo's very humble. I really think you should have an episode with Momo because I think people need to get to know Momo better. He's an amazing. He's amazing at asking questions. We all like him. We all get to know. We're all, we're all like we all enjoy listening to him. But like, let's hear Momo's story one day. I think the question. Want to do it right now? We could <laughs> change. I can help <laughs> I you. Know, knock I can. I can. The number Momo. one question I get about Momo is where did he get his glasses? Nice. That's the number one question. Like, they where are, did he get his are, glasses? They are pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. And I, and I say, um, pay less. Lens craft. Like, what's <laughs> no, these are just uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses that I just put lenses into. You're a rock star. Um, but yeah, my role is to help our guests spread the light of their message. That's my role here. Well, you're doing clearly a great job. defined. You're doing a great job. Thank you. So back to the struggles. But you know what? <laughs> when you talk about managing expectations and that you were like disappointed out of the gate, I feel like you needed that passion where on day one I'm getting 10,000 people because otherwise you wouldn't have been quote unquote crazy enough on the side of being a medical doctor with the chiropractic practice with a family, with everything that you have going on to take on a project like this. You had to believe that there were going to be 10,000 people day one because you needed that passion to drive you to do that. Jonathan, if I, t if I told you that day one, you'd have 40 people. Would you, would you go ahead with it, with the work knowing what the sleepless nights and everything? It's a great question. Like if yeah. I told you like, don't, don't even know what, not knowing what exists now for you. And if I told you 40 people are going to sign up day one, would you go through what you went through? I, I honesty. think, I think this is the honesty zone. I, I think so. I think so. This is what I did. I, when 40 people signed up, so I sent an email out to like everyone I knew. And I've had a lot of worlds being from Minnesota, going to yeah. Skokie, being a camp pass counselor, going to Mavacera, you know, like they're going to YU, right? There's like a lot of worlds calling your favors. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So literally after that first week when I got like maybe a hundred, I just started calling up a different person every night. And I like, I didn't want, did not want a day to go by without a new giver. So I would, I mean, literally I was like going through my Rolodex and like, I'd call people and like, like doing gonna, the doff. It's going to be awkward, I but one uh, listen, this is what we're doing. And they're like, I'm like, they're like, oh, it's a great idea. I'm like, well, I need you to sign up now. 
<laughs> They're like, what? Yeah, could you, do me? you know, you're going to love it. You'll see. I promise you're going to love it. You know, that was, that was what I like. And I would call people every night. If, if no one had signed up from the day, sometimes someone would randomly sign up, whatever, but it was like 10 o'clock came or nine, you know, when it was like, okay, I can't call people too late. Right. If I saw no one had signed up, I started calling people and that's how I, that's, that's so hailing by the way. I just want to zero in on that. Yeah. The, the blood, sweat and tears of that one sign up. Right. It doesn't get old. Today, you can look in a few hundred a day or whatever it may be. That one person that you call directly. Yeah. We're going to get the email. Like, go to I, I, I should give them the credit. They, they signed up, right? They, you know, it's I know, not but easy. You know, it's, it's not, not easy to take like, the credit card. I know. It's really not hard. It's, not, it's really not easy to ask people for money. And it's like the worst thing. You don't to call someone and ask them for money is just the worst. Like, I don't know. It's just not fun. It's not fun. It's and, not fun. And I, by the way, daily giving takes nothing. I don't. I don't get paid for this, right? So right. Make sure people. You know, daily giving, yeah. even as an organization, we take zero. A hundred cents of every dollar goes to the beneficiary organizations. Wow, that's worthy. That's worthy of, of highlighting sure. as well. So, yeah. like the overhead you raise. Correct. Every if you ever see that, we just came out. I think it was good. People say it was good. We came out with a really nice uh, Rosh Hashanah video. And yeah, I mean, it's not free. I tell you, you know, people have to get paid. So I have a staff, you know, um, uh, um, we have some amazing volunteers that have volunteered for already some of them years. I mean, I'm not even going to mention names. They don't want to be mentioned. Literally, I have an accountant in Chicago who's literally volunteered for three years for us. I've never met him in person. The reason I trust him with people's credit cards is because he was in the Dafiomi show with my first cousin, you know, wow. in Skokie. And um, he, I mean, this guy's, hey, he's an accountant. I was like, he's like, I want to, I love your organization. I want to volunteer. And I said, this is what I need. We have credit cards that fail. I need you to like call, text, email them that your credit card failed. Do you want to get back onto daily giving? He's like, sure. He's been doing it. He's, he has our whole division of volunteers that help us with that. Wow. He's doing it for three years. Never, no, he will, he will not, his name is not on our website. He will not allow it. I mean, wow. these, are, these are just some, I'm just some examples of it. There's a, there's a, there's a woman named Chaviva. You know, she's volunteered for us for, for a couple of years. She has a full, she was, she was in Stern when she started, she, when she started volunteering for us as like an internship. Um, Daily Giving was as close to winning the OU Impact Accelerator. Uh, it, was nice. like a, it was like a grant. Tor anytime won the first year and then we won the second year. And um, it's, it's, it, was, it was kind of a big deal. And uh, they gave us interns and Chaviva was our intern and she was still in Stern. But then she graduated. She's, she's a full-time paid job. She stayed on. She's like one of our most important volunteers. She's from LA too, huh? LA nice. people, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's, so call, uh, you're, you're calling people at night, asking them, hey, could you just donate a dollar a day for this? And it's probably difficult because it's, it's not yet like a thing. It's not like everyone knows what this is. So it's like, I mean, I'm being- Didn't yet hit that tipping point. Yeah, I'm, exactly right. That, that snowball effect. Yeah. I'm not saying we're there yet, but we're getting closer. People it are being hit now. up by so many different- organizations to give and and but you're calling up with this different little twist you're like it's just a dollar a day just give me one dollar and every day goes to different organization people like that people like to know because any organization will take your 31 dollars a month right in fact i've had probably over a dozen of our beneficial organizations tell me by the way jonathan we we tried that right we're like if we can get eight thousand of our donors we have eight thousand donors if eight thousand donors give a dollar a day we're set our budget that's it that's all we need and like it was an epic fail yeah i've seen i've seen these things tried a lot it doesn't work. You've had success doing this. And I, I guess let's just spoil it for the people and we'll, we'll work backwards a little bit. You have very close to 11,000 people giving a dollar a day. Nachi's a little behind. It's over 11,000. Today was 11,611. Oh, for, oh my God. Yes. Yeah. My wife showed me the email. 11,000. You almost have 12,000 people, 12,000 people giving a dollar a day from 34 countries. That's, that's, so like when now like for people who are just hearing this for the first time don't know much about daily giving when you hear about the volunteers and the accountant the amount of work that's going into it's about twelve probably in you know, over ten thousand credit cards being charged every single day and being that money is being sent out how much money to to date has been given to Tzedakah? Uh, just th- I think just a week or two ago we went over we've distributed over six million dollars so far wow but we're on pace for over four point two million this year alone so. Uh, Jonathan Donat has we're, given we're, six million dollars to Tzedakah. It's, not, it's, it's for me. I only give five dollars a day, <laughs> so that's the that's the cool thing about it, right? Everyone has. In fact, my my one of my oldest best friends, Shirley Smith from Minnesota, he's, he's a he's a he lives in Pittsburgh, and um, he sent me this great thing. I wish I should I should have brought it. It was it, it was some some Chazal said somewhere that when you give a mitzvah with the klal, you get a piece of everyone's mitzvah. Mm. 
So if you think about that, so everyone's giving for a dollar. You give a dollar, but you get eleven thousand over eleven thousand mitzvahs, and it just keeps growing. Could we get the tax receipt for the whole thing? <laughs> That'd be great. Also, I love Nachi's mind. You get, something, <laughs> you get something more valuable than the tax receipt, for sure. my friend. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But that's it, it's just like one of those. I remember, like I remember, I spoke to you years ago. Um, I think Rabbi Tzvi Sittner or ETL Goldberg connected. I yeah, think, it was, I think yeah. it was ETL, and like we spoke about it. I'm like, it's a great idea. You know, it's it's like one of those ideas, like amazing, like let's see what happens to it. You know, and I think a big part of the success, and it is success, to to have over ten thousand people doing something every single day, is Baruch Hashem successful. And I know that I know your your personality. You want there to be twenty thousand. You want to be thirty thousand, forty thousand, but it's an incredible feat. And and I and I just like I know that it wasn't easy getting there. And you spent sleepless nights working to get to that point, just getting people to sign up. I've been with you places where you'll just go over to people and say, hey, um, you want to give a dollar a day to Tzedakah? My Momo, for the record, my pitch line is much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to do a pitch line for all the listeners at some point. But so we just we just like jumped from you. You had 100 the first few weeks and now you're at almost 12,000. What was that process? It wasn't overnight. It happened overnight. It wasn't years. overnight. Listen, let's be honest. It was a lot of Siyat right? Like, like, Yeah. And I want to frame this because it's important because people who are listening, like, you know, it's something we, we like to do. We have here a guest who had this idea to help Claudia Searle, who has an occupation, who has a family, you have your community, you're doing your thing. And your idea, your blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this idea has given over $6 million to Tzedakah. That has, again, Bone Olam has helped bring lives into the world because of what you did. Chaya Lifeline helped people because of what you did. RCCS helped people pay for cancer treatments and get into remission because of that idea that one person from Minnesota had. And I, and I think it's so important to, to have this conversation because it didn't happen overnight and it, it wasn't, there was moments where I'm sure you could have said enough. This is crazy. I'm done, but you kept going. So I said before that I, I was one of those lucky people that feels like I had, I knew what my top kid was, you know, and I can't say that the day I had the idea, I thought, wow, this is my top kid. My you know, but as it got going, I, I do feel like this is my real top kid or, or you can have more than one top kid, you know? Yeah, um, sure. And I just feel like, this is my passion. This is my passion. It's the biggest win-win-win in the world, right? Like, we didn't even talk about my favorite part about daily giving. It's not even, yes, the reason I started is I want to get a mitzvah every day. I want to automate that that process so everyone can just get a mitzvah every single day of tzedakah and be giving every day, right? But the achtas we're creating. And I don't know if everyone gets to feel that like I do. Like, so every day you get an email. We didn't even talk about this yet. Every day you get an email telling you where the money's going and how much. So, um, you know, on the way here, I was talking to one of my best friends. He's a CEO of a big company. And he, he, in the past, he told me, he's like, Jonathan, I get so many emails. I remember the beginning, he's like, I do not want to get another email. I'm like, just get the email for like three weeks. You want to unsubscribe? I'll never know. Just, not, you know, unsubscribe. And to this day, he's like, it's the only email I open up every single day. I look forward to it. I feel good. It makes me feel good. I look at how much money, and it grows almost every single day. More people give and more people give. And so it's, first of all, it's a great feeling. Like your dollars what are, what become more and more valuable. Like? What are the stats like? Because you, you have the ability to see open rates and stuff like that and you have like what's so that? so it's funny you ask that because we didn't talk about this before but um we have a 57 percent open rate on our daily email that's 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 a lot it's built it's like <laughs> people absurd, who think that's, right? that's, if you're yeah. if anyone is in a non-profit the non-profit world right now or even going, email what? that can't be true yeah like because most people what i've told again i'm not now i guess i'm in the non-profit world but i still don't feel like i feel like i'm an imposter but um the a, a, a very good number is in a quarterly email is considered 20%. If you have 20% open your quarterly email, that's considered excellent. Yeah. And we have 50% open every single day. And we have over, over our, our email list is over 12,000. So um, I think that that's part of the special sauce that we discovered, you know, that the daily email that people- Feel connected. People, I'll just tell you another story. This happened just the other day. Um, Sam Chilev is an incredible organization we give to that helps people with poverty, orphans, widows. It's in, mostly families in Israel, some in America. And um, I didn't take this call, but um, Arya Friedner, our COO, took this call. He was speaking to them, and they said, by the way, we got to tell you the story, that we got eight donors came through our website in one day. Now, if you're a nonprofit, and you just have like a random you know, website, and you have like a donate button, I don't know how many people are clicking that button that often without being solicited or being told. So when you had eight donors on your website on a random day, they couldn't figure out 
why they got these eight sizable donations. And then they figured out that was the day the daily giving gave them. Wow. And so our email, because you know, our daily email says a blurb about each organization with a link to their website. So in case people want to go give more. So the truth is, even though we've already given out 6 million and we're on pace to give another 4.2 million this year, um, not, I'm sorry, not on pace. We're, we, even if no one ever joined again, we'd give out 4.2 million this year. But the, you know, even with that, um, we don't know how much how much people, people have given because we hear stories all the time from our partners about this one wrote a ten thousand dollar check and how do you hear about it? It's our daily giving. I didn't know you existed before daily giving. So right, and that you can't feel, capture, you can't measure that. Yeah, thank wow. God. We are joined by Shmuel Sackett all the way from Eretz Yisrael, and our and our listeners right now are getting excited because they know when Shmuel's in the studio, it's because the Dream Raffle is back. It is back. Lashon Habayim Yerushalayim is back. Yes, yes, that's right. And uh, the Dream Raffle dot com. Yes. And that is what you have to um, click on, if you will. And for those watching, it's right here on the bottom of the screen. And you could, when you purchase a raffle ticket, and you can win a million dollar apartment in the heart of Yerushalayim. Living the dream. Living yeah. the dream. Absolutely incredible. And I just met somebody who, uh, this is our fifth year. And someone says, Shmuel, I've been doing this for four years. I haven't won. I said, no, you've won each year. Wow. Because the money goes to incredible things. For example, Right now, Shemitah just ended, right? Yeah. Where after Rosh Hashanah, Shemitah just ended. We are the biggest donor to farmers, to Israeli farmers. We've planted over 500,000 fruit trees in Israel over the years. Wow. And now, from the end of Shemitah for the next two months, we're planting 70,000 new fruit trees. Wow. So, and that comes from funds from the Dream Raffle and some other amazing things. So a million dollar apartment and you can win. Also, right now, we're having a bonus raffle. So whoever enters can also win this bonus raffle. There's a round trip to Israel. There's iPads, Art Scroll, fully loaded iPads. Oh, yeah. Absolutely incredible. And one second. Yeah, there's, well, and there's and more. And there's more. <laughs> and there's more. We're offering double tickets. So you order now. You order one, we'll give you two. Order five, give you ten and so on. And use code MPP for Meaningful People Podcast. Podcast. There it is, MPP, and save an additional $10. Nice. So you got the $10 off with MPP, you have the bonus raffle, you have the two for one, and for you guys sitting here, I have something for you, even oh, without oh. buying a raffle oh, ticket. Wow. Whoa. You know, we'll do it. we're doing this live, by the way. That's I don't right. Know what he's about here to say. it is. We'll do it live. And the Dream Raffle is run by the Ami Stroll Chai Foundation. Here are hats Goodbye. from the Ami Yisrael Chai Foundation. Thank Look you. at that. Thank Look at that. I'm gotta tight. Love, gotta love swag. You gotta love that, is it? That's uh, that's fantastic. Yes. So there it is. Am Yisrael Chai. What better way to start off a year by saying yes. Am Yisrael Chai. That's what the people need to do at thedreamraffle.com. Get your tickets because you could be living the dream. In the heart. Living the dream in the heart of Yisrael. You see how I buy it from the apartment. Unbelievable. Literally. And uh, it would be a great pleasure for me to present the winning ticket to someone who says, Shmuel, I saw this on MPP and I used the code and I got two for one and that's why I won. That would give me great, great simcha. MPP. Wow. For anyone that is watching, by the way, I was able to put the hat right on. Nahi, as an issue, he actually has hair. <laughs> so it's hard for him to just like you can make a large put one. hats on. <laughs> yes. I can put them on, take them off. Well, Doesn't have a big impact. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, enjoy the rest of this episode, but make sure to head to dreamraffle.com. I want to zero in on something that you said sort of just in passing that that you feel somewhat like an imposter. And I want to empower people in the way that Nahi did. If you have an idea and you believe you can make a difference, just do it, right? And you don't have to feel like you're capable of doing it. You don't have to feel like, Oh, I'm supposed to be doing this because even Dr. J himself at the level of success that he's achieved, we all feel that imposter syndrome, even at the level of success that you've already experienced. So if that, I'd invite you to just elaborate on that for a moment and maybe empower our listeners to like, just plow through that imposter syndrome. I think I, I have one really good trait and that is persistence. And um, I don't give up easily. And I I really felt this was a home run idea. And by the way, lots of people had this idea. I'm not special, right? Um, 
I just had like I always think to myself, what if I caught you and he's like, no, I can't build you a website. Yeah, right? <laughs> maybe this never happens. I even joke with him about that. You know, do I call someone else? I don't know. Maybe you just don't do you it. You know, yeah. um, like a lot of things. You know, like I said, there's a lot of Siad Dishmaya, right? And my friend, like there's you know, there's a lot of people behind the scenes. You know that I haven't mentioned that make this work. It's not a trust me. This is not a one man show. And um, and I and I you know I feel uh, first off, I have to thank Naki. Naki, one of our one of our main cogs are real is Rabbi Israel Abisrar. Mm. who Naki introduced me to. He's, Beard man. He's vice president. He got he got a mention on, on a Meaningful People podcast episode a couple weeks ago for, you know his, what? for his stellar beard. Surly, <laughs> surly, we're going to show the picture right over here. He's Surly Abasaur's beard. I think just show the beard. No, just show the whole face. You know that I've never <laughs> seen an episode of Meaningful People and I've listened to every single one, but it's always in the car. So you have Never to watched it? tons of people who are not watching. How can we get the wow. people who are listening to see his beard? Could you like a hologram in their car? I don't know how we can do that. Surely. But listen, he's a Hale Gayid, you know, not just his beard. He's a really, he's he really, and then we have Rabbi, Rabbi Ari Friedner, our CEO, who's, you know, these guys are killing it. You know, like it's, this is, it takes a lot. You John, know, you're hundred percent right. And, and you have an amazing team and I'm going to just push back because like, I know, you know, that in those early days, it was just you an idea and, you know, and a passion. And a passion. So, you know, back to, you know, Momo, you, you had, you gave me an opening for, for a line I, I do like, right? Rabbi Pesach Kron has a famous equation he likes to speak about. And it's SW cubed. So for those, you know, you know, just picture a big capital S and a big W with a three in the top corner over, like divided by, over N. And it means some will, some won't, so what? Next. Hmm. I want to wow. say it again. Because I think it's so, it's that important. It could, it help it helped me in so many different facets of my life. Some will, some won't. So what next, right? And so, yeah, it's discouraging sometimes. Sometimes I still get upset, and like I just can't understand why more people aren't joining. Everyone loves being a part. Everyone who's a daily giver loves it. Right? I mean, like a hundred percent, you know, happy rate. Like everyone loves being a part of it, right? But for whatever reason. But you know what? Some will, some won't. So what next? And 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 that's what I just tell myself. You know, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, or, or they think it's not for them. And maybe one day they'll see the light. And such an important, and it's such an important lesson for for really anyone and whatever they do. It's exactly right. If, if whatever you do, whether it's professionally or it's a hobby or it's you know, like I I'd like to think that there's thousands of little Dr. Jonathan Donaths at home trying to figure out like what can i do what can i create i want to do something i i don't have to guess i know there are and i'm sure you know as well i'm sure you feel phone calls of people with ideas how do i get it started how do i get off the ground and that what you just said is that's the that's the equation that's the thing that people should have in their wallets sw squared over sw cubed I was never good at math. <laughs> <laughs> I was never Three good times. at math. Yep. Oh my some gosh. will, some won't. Some Guys, I'm just letting next. everyone know in order to be a podcast host, you don't need to like pass your math regents, <laughs> although I did. Evidently. Uh, you know, I'm sitting next to a lawyer and a doctor. Who am I? You know? Former MBA agent. Yeah, this segment's sponsored by Coca Cola. <laughs> that's my seg that's my segue. Um that's that's really like that's everything for for anyone doing anything. Look, it's helped me a lot in my career too. Of right? course, like, I'm, I, like I said, I come from a family of all medical doctors, and I missed that part. That's and, really I, and I and I and um and I wanted to go into at first. I wanted to do, I wanted to help people. I didn't know what kind of doctor I wanted to be. I was should I be? I like you know I got braces later. I liked orthodontistry, but my sister was becoming a dentist, and she has sort of had the dental part taken care of. And she's you know I didn't want to go infringe on her area. And my uncle's a podiatrist, and I thought about that, but. Like you know, feet, I don't yeah, know. feet. And then I did a little bit. I know I treat a lot of feet, but at the time <laughs> I didn't realize that, you know? And so, you know, it, it just, it, it was hard because I, I do like, you know, like anyone, you want to be proud of what you do. And there are people that think, you know, that, that people don't really understand. Chiropractic is very misunderstood. And there are, by the way, there are good doctors or bad doctors. There are good chiropractors or like bad chiropractors, field, yeah. right? So, you know, to me, it was always like, I'm going to prove myself to be like the doctor that treats medical doctors. And by the way, just living in the firm community. I, like people ask, how do you, you know, how has a chiropractor, how do you treat like, I think I treat over like 70 medical doctors now and which is unusual. You know, most doctors, most medical doctors don't go to chiropractors, you know? And it started with, what do you think? Doctors in my shul, right? They knew me, they trusted me. And when their backs went out or when their migraines or they had herniated discs and then no one could help them, they're like, all right, 
Jonathan, what do you do? Can you help me? You know, and they started and then I fixed them and they're like, okay, next thing I know, I'm treating all the attendings at Jacoby Hospital. Next thing I know, I'm 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 giving I'm lecturing to the, the you know the the students in a medical medical school. Next thing I know, right? And one thing leads to another, leads to another thing, and then you know, so I think that we have a another thing as you're talking to you know young people going out there, like the advantage we have of being uh, the Jewish community, right? How they're like here's another example. As a chiropractor, I can't prescribe medication. Just not that's not what we do. We we fix we we look at the root cause, root problems. We use lasers. We use machines. We use different things. We use our hands, but we don't prescribe medication. I wish I could. And personally, like I treat a lot of serious serious pain. I wish there was one one. I wish I could just a couple pain pills would be nice. A couple muscle relaxants would be great. But okay, it's not in my scope of practice. But it, there are times where I have a non Jewish patient in my office, and they're like they need a certain drug, and I know they need that drug. And then I'm like, can you like do you have like a friend or a relative they can call? And like ask to get a prescription. And they look <laughs> at me like I have 10 eyes. They're like, what? <laughs> you know, like if I need a prescription, I can ask like 17 of my friends in like 14 seconds. Right. Wow. Cause we're Jonathan, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Anything <laughs> can be held against. Me. Right. Like, like that's the me complicates. Right. Like we don't realize we live in a, we live in, in our neighborhoods, right. We, we you know so many doctors, right. And like yeah. so many people can help us. Like we, we, we take for granted the communities we live in and that when God forbid something happens, when someone gets cancer or someone, someone's struggling with some, something, there's like a hundred people ready to cook meals for them and take all their kids for carpool for the next three months. And, Right? That doesn't exist. I want to unpack another. That doesn't layer. exist outside our world. You know what I mean? Unpack. Yeah, I want to unpack another layer of double click, if you will. Nice mm -hmm. uh, of an aspect of what you're talking about, where not only do we know a lot of people that are capable of providing that help, but in our community, in the from community, there's a willingness to help. Right, where even if, for example, that non-Jewish person, if they, even if they would know as many doctors as we know, just were comfortable asking each other for help because we know how willing we are to provide that help. So true. So true. That's who we are. You know, and I think that if, if, if I'm hearing what you're saying, it's like people just got to just try the crazy things that you have in your head because we're, we're there to help you. You know, Jews are there. We're there to help each other achieve success. And I think that if you look around at what, what we've created in, in the from world, from mental health to helping treat, you know, illness, you know, RCS, Masaska, and Boniola. I'm like, Boniola was just involved with like a, a uterus transplant, doing things that have never been done. And like, we are, we are the greatest people in the world. Really? I mean, let's just, you know, since we're not since, we in this room, but since like, you're, <laughs> since your organization, organization dropping, let's talk about some of these. These are some of the incredible organizations. Yeah. To, right. RCCS. Right. Yeah. I mean, Unfortunately, something we have in common, Naki, you know, we both have sisters that lost husbands, yeah. you know, and um, I don't know the whole story with your, 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 um, bro your late brother-in-law, but my brother-in-law had cancer, you know, and I, and I saw firsthand what RCCS did. It's, it's like unbelievable. It's not normal what, what they do, right? Like not just the, the, the amount of information that they know, like I actually have, unfortunately have a, one of my best friends from high school has a brain tumor right now. And I was in touch with RCCS and they already, they already knew. They already knew his case. I couldn't believe it. I called him up, right? This is like a close friend. I call up RCCS, right? I, uh, and and the amount of information they knew on him was way above what I knew already from my connections. And not to mention that, you know, they're willing to do things that no one else is willing to do. They, they help people with the bills. It's not just paying the bills. It's the people who can afford the bills. But let's say you're, you're, you have a loved one that's, that has cancer. The, the, it's like a full-time job going through the bills and figuring out what to pay, how to pay, it's like, it's, it's nonstop. And so they have a whole department that helps with that. Who thinks to do that, right? Yeah. We have an organization called the Victor's Helping Hand. Of course. The, the, the uh, I don't know how to say it's based in the five towns, but like it's. Yeah, that's where it started. It started, yeah, you know? started out here. I mean, you know, if someone, God forbid, loses a, loses a spouse, right? And they can't afford their, their, their mortgage payments or their rent payments, they'll, they'll pay for six months. If they have children, they will help pay for their weddings. They've paid, they've paid for, I don't want thousands of weddings like, yeah. for these orphans, right? This is in America. It's not like in Israel. It's like, right? This is here. And they, and they also, um, you know, we're very particular in, in the organization we, we choose that they don't have high overheads, right? We want to make sure that it's going, you know, to not to pay overheads as much, as much as possible. Every organization needs over, you know, has an overhead yeah. and that's okay, but not, not to have it out of whack. And so they're one of those organizations that someone basically pays for their whole overhead. So every dollar you donate goes to literally help the people who need it. 
So there's just just a, just a couple I'm naming, but yeah, and some of the names of the organizations that that you're mentioning and Nachi was rattling off, some of our a lot of our listeners are familiar with. Yeah, I was hoping you might be able to showcase some of the less well known organizations that you've had a chance to learn about their sure. work and and maybe share it with our listeners. You know, um, you're you put me on the spot there, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll that's definitely what go we do. A yeah, <laughs> I right. mean, look, Hesed twenty four seven. I think they're known, but Next. <laughs> but like, I mean, <laughs> too well known, you know, like you go to a hospital and you go to the bigger holding room and it's stocked. It's stocked, right? Like it's crazy. It's just unbelievable. That, and we're not talking about one hospital, only Sloan Kettering and only Columbia and New York city. Like we're talking in many, many, many hospitals across the tri-state area, wow. at least probably in other places too. You know, um, today we gave to La Manachai. Okay. It's an organization. Know, in Israel. You know what that is? Not yet. Okay. It's an incredible organization. La Manachai, What do they say? Like you can, I don't want to, I'm going to butcher it. So forget it. But, but butcher it. you Just can do teach, it. uh, you, if you, if you teach someone to fish, they'll always have something to eat. Whatever. That's not the line. I know, but I fish, you fed him for a day. Teach him to fish. You fed him for life. Thank Again, you, Momo. Honey, just in the brain. Momo, thank like, you. Thank you. Dip the um, Momo's <laughs> like that's, it's just honey. That's what they do. So they, they take people who are struggling with poverty and they teach them interview skills and they teach them how to get jobs and they that's help amazing. them with their resumes, you know? So they are literally helping thousands and thousands of people in Israel break the cycle of poverty because they're helping them get jobs. Wow. That's just another one. That but you know, it's so head. like, that's, I don't, again, I don't know who started the Manachai and that's such a great idea, but it, the, all, these ideas that are, are like, there, there are certain ideas that are, you <laughs> ain't smiling at me. <laughs> you think I'm about to do some math equation? No, I'm mess enjoying up? you enjoying this. Right. Like there are certain ideas, like let's say like Boney Olin, for example, like it's, it's complex work. You know, Shlemy and Hani Bachner, they are angels. They're doing God's work. They're literally going to doctors and saying, like, we're trying again. We're doing this. We're doing that treatment, that treatment. It's complex. And then you have some ideas that are like, huh, I wish I came up with that one. Like, there's poverty. And instead of just maybe just, like, just funneling money to these families, like, maybe if I can teach these group of people how to, you know, get a job and how to be able to secure the job and, and to budget correctly, you know, I can do so much for the future generations. And it's so much of what you did as well, which is just like, like people, like n there are ideas that can still be had. It can still, still be created. Like the RCCS of tomorrow, the Bona Olm of tomorrow, the High Life Line of tomorrow has not been created yet. You know what's an up and coming one that we give to? Yeah, let's hear. Just one chesed. Oh my gosh. Can I tell you something about Just One Chesed? I was hired as, I think I was their first marketing person hired. And I created their logo. No way. And, <laughs> to this day, and that's the logo they're using? And their branding. Yeah. I mean, wow. like I, I, I tried like dabbling in marketing when I first started Meaningful Minute and I, I had a designer and we were like this and like Just One Chesed was my first like uh, client. And uh, they are exploding in terms of the chesed they're doing, you know, the, the different, different facets to it. I don't want to, I don't want to, there's so many things I'm keeping track of, so I don't want to butcher what they're doing right. completely, but ch check out Just One Chesed. They're, they're incredible. Um, NASC, NASA's National Association for Hever Kedisha. There's another one. I don't know if you know Rabbi Zone. He's a tzaddik. He's a tzaddik of tzaddiks. And, he's been, uh, he's been recommended. Oh my gosh. Times. He has done over 30,000 taharas. Wow. He... He and that's so that's 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 his day job. Naskis is like, you know, his 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 fun job, right? And I remember talking to Rabbi Shmuel Greenberg, my Rav, and Rabbi Greenberg said that Rabbi Zone, like every and my brother's also a Shul Rav, so my brother's also every Shul Rav has Rabbi Zone's number because if you have someone Chas Shalom dies in the middle of the night or in a weird like, just unfortunately, my brother's a Rabbi in Fairline, Fairlawn, just a, a couple weeks ago, um, a a two year old died. In, in the Bahamas or on vacation, right. right? Like these are the types of struggling, the things that like Rabbi Zone gets called about, bodies, this, that, how, and it gets questioned. So every Rav has Rabbi Zone's number and, they, and he, he never shuts his phone and he's been doing this for decades, you know? Then Rabbi Zone told me something amazing. This is uh, uh, that, that for years he wanted to start like a sub organization to really educate the greater world, the non-Jewish world, uh, that, that cremation is against the Torah. And he told me, how yeah. come? 
he just because he because he gets these questions all the time. Mm-hmm. He gets called all the time from someone in Alabama or Oklahoma and says like, you know, I mean, even if it, even if it prevents one person from being cremated by accident, they didn't know. Hey, it's a big deal, you know. Yeah. And um, he he told me that when Daily Giving's numbers were growing, remember. So we give the way it works is we give every organization every day a different organization gets. Um, so right now we're around sixty organizations. We're we're about to add a couple more. Um, and um, so then every basically right now they're getting about six times a year, times a year yeah. you know. So he told me that when when we got to the point where we were getting over forty thousand dollars from daily giving, it gave him the the confidence to go ahead and hire a full time employee to start this subdivision. It's called the Last Kindness. It's actually it also won the OU Impact Accelerator the year after us. Wow! Mm-hmm. Right. So it kind of kind of f- comes full circle. It's run by Yale Davidovitz, and it's amazing. It is the stuff they are doing. The, the way they're getting people. Um, out there and the, and the the to you know using social media and other things to just to completely unaffiliated Jews because it always be like one relative like one relative wants to bury but then like this well the brother there says nope you know wow. I want to I want to cremate such so, a cool impact yeah. of what you're doing aside for the you know the big numbers the six million dollars total and you know the eleven thousand dollars each day but you're you're changing organizations and giving them stability if they know that they're receiving that know periodically through throughout the year and that you have a subscribership that's providing that support on an ongoing consistent reliable basis it's creating stability for these organizations as well yeah i mean i wish someone would do it it for us you know (laughs) that's like i I gotta raise the i gotta raise all our funds let me tell you it's not easy so that's so interesting because like one like that person who's going to sign up tonight and give one dollar they're creating that stability for over 60 organizations with their $1. Exactly. How do you spell exactly? E-G-G-Z-A-H-K-L-Y. My iPhone has learned that word. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. So you guys ready for a good story? Oh, it's story time. So I have a lot of good stories because like you get a lot of phone calls. I forget, I forget a lot of them, but, but this one, this one was uh, really meaningful to me. Um, This gentleman signed up for $5 a day, which is not so unusual. You know, I'd say 85, 90% of our givers give a dollar a day. And then you have people who sign up for a dollar a day for everyone in their family or they sign up for this, for that. I'll tell you another story about, you know, signing up for a shidduch. That was really amazing. But, um, so, that, so, you know, I, that's what I always did. I, it's just amazing to teach your kids about tzedakah because yeah. you can't tell your kids about the check you wrote, the big check you wrote to Camp Hask, right? But you can tell them that you're giving a dollar of tzedakah in their name. And my kids are old enough to get the emails. And so I can't say how many amazing conversations that it's, you know, it's kind of spurred at the Shabbos table about organizations, organizations that not only did they never, of course, they never heard of them. They may, ne- may have never even known that that problem existed. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we're now we're sensitivity. T- correct. A hundred percent. Right. You know, the mental health, the substance abuse, the domestic violence. We give to all these different organizations that help, you know, people in this whole diversified portfolio of, of, of need. Right. And so, so it's not unusual that someone signs up for $5 a day. Okay. But this one gentleman signed up for $1, then a minute later signed up again with a different email, and again with another email, and another five times with five different emails. Now, usually people just sign up for $5 a day, yeah. and they just send us an email. Can you add my kids or you know, my wife, whatever, to, to the daily giving emails? Sure, no problem. So I call him up, and uh, I used to try to call up anyone who gave over like 2 or $3 a day. I'd call it myself. Now it's gotten, thank God, too much, but we have a team. So we try to call up everyone who's given up you know, more than a couple dollars a day. And so I called him up and I thanked him and, you know, kind of like the schmooze and hear how they heard about us. And, and I said, um, oh, this is like so amazing. You signed up for your kids. It's, you're going to love it. It's incredible. I said, by the way, how old are your children? So he said, one, two, and four. Wow. Momo's quick. Wow. Momo's fast. So I said, really, can you, can you explain that to me? And he's like, yeah, I, first of all, I got Gmail accounts for all my kids. So when they, when they're old enough that they have their Gmail accounts reserved, but mm. when they open their emails for the first time, when they're. 11 years old, they're going to find hundreds, if not thousands of emails. Only one. There'll only be one email there, but it'll be repeat. Thank you for your donation. And they'll go click through and they will see that they've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mitzvahs and given hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to charity. Gewalt. That is a moira diga misa. That's awesome. I'll tell you the, the Momo reason. Momo has six kids. So I think tonight you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I, I was able to, to catch the story so quickly is because. You make me look stupid. Yeah. Uh, no, because a friend of mine. He had not as Halig, but a similarly structured idea where he had multiples. I think it was triplets. And some of them looked alike. And what he would do is for baby pictures, he signed up each one for an email 
and he would send pictures of that child to their email so that they could have pictures and know years later which one was actually them. Fascinating. Oh my gosh. How come my daughter's two and a half? She doesn't have an email address yet and I feel like a terrible father. <laughs> like, why don't we have an email address for her yet? All your kids have emails? You are not a terrible father. Not Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, just the other day, um, I, I spoke at uh, a dinner for Just One Life, another organization we give to, another amazing organization that helps support women who financially can't afford babies and are thinking about terminating their pregnancies because they literally can't afford it. Or maybe they have a spouse who wants to terminate, but they don't want to. And Just One Life has saved over 19,700 babies. Wow. And over like the last 20, 30 years. So um, I spoke at their dinner last last week, right before I, I got to warm up with the crowd for the halo of Rev Y.Y. Jacobson. Mm. Mm. So I told this story. And so Rev Y.Y. told me afterwards that he said, I found that story so meaningful because he said a couple years ago, he had a um, really sad story that there was a divorcee that there's, their kid lost their children in a, in a, in a, in a divorce, lost custody of their children. And he was just so devastated and it came to Rev Y.Y. for some advice. And Rev Y.Y. told him every single day, make an email for your, all your children. And every single day you write an email to your child you know, I love you. I'm thinking about you. Here's a picture of me doing this as I'm thinking about you. And every day, write them a message. Because one day, one day they're going to grow up and they're going to look for their father and they're going to they're gonna ask you, why were you not involved? Wow. And you're going to say, you're going to show them the email and you're going to give them the password. Like, wow. Or why, why? Only wow. why, why can think of that, right? Gavalt. Yeah. I want to highlight something else, which is email. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who email, invented email? <laughs> email is a tool that we all have in our life and it bombards us throughout the day. And there's all these ideas for how to manage your inbox and how to just deal with it. And we just highlighted in a matter of three minutes, three things that is so hailing that you can do with email. It's crazy, right? And Hashem gives us tools and puts powerful tools into the world. And it's in our hands how we utilize those tools. 100%. And you know, like Sarah Smechuva. When this episode airs, it's still a Sarah Samechuva. I like to say, like most people listen to the episode in the first seven days it's out. Although, Baruch Hashem, people listen to it months after and even years after. But for those who are listening now, I mean, it's a Sarah Samechuva. And a reason why I wanted to do this episode now is, you know, I, you find yourself in shul on, on Rosh Hashanah in your afternoon of Sama Tekev, And what are the words that you say? You know, what you not say, you scream, right? She would feel tzedakah, like that can get rid of the bad decree. And you think of tzedakah and, and you think, oh, well, maybe you need to have money. You need to have a good job. You need to have stability. You need to be rich. And I think what, you, what you've created and what you've shown is that you don't need that. Because even the people who have not a lot, a dollar a day, in most cases, is something that they have. A dollar a day. One dollar. Sixty cents. One dollar. Well, just because I want people to understand, I don't want to. It is $31 a month. We can't yeah. hit people's credit card every day. And it's a hundred cents. Yeah. What did I say? No, what I did I say? No, you were right. You were, yeah, you were good. Said 60 cents. No, I didn't. No. You did? <laughs> I said 60 cents. Yeah, dude. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, Nahi. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you one Sorry. thing. I, 60 seconds, that's my business. I, <laughs> what uh, I fasted today? This is I'm telling you, edited. This is gonna be edited. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> For surely, please. One dollar sixty cents. Okay. I just I need to have a burger. One second. Um. Yeah. Where were we? Shuva Tzfila Tzedakah. Yeah. Right. Like those words you scream. I think that you you know going back to what you asked before also like one of the struggles. I ask myself this all the time. Why do we only have ten thousand people? Why do we only have eleven thousand people? And 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 I had the zchus, the real zchus, to have gotten to know Rav Zachary Wallerstein Zatzal um, pretty well. By the way, he he was a massive fan of daily giving, and he pushed us. I think uh, actually our records show that he he single handedly got over five hundred people to sign up for daily giving. You know that was another thing how we grew. We got famous rabbanim and speakers and influencers, you know, talking about us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, just today, Charlene Amanoff did a nice, you know, just made an amazing push on, on Instagram for daily giving. Uh, she gives for she gives for everyone in her family. She loves it, you know. And it's just been amazing that all these people have been willing to do it because most people in their position they don't want to push it tzedakah. 
when you go to a, a rabbit, when you go to any rav, and I've gone through a lot of them, the first thing they say is, I can't push one yeah. stalker. I'm going to get, I get asked by everyone. But the thing is, we are everyone, mm. right? Daily giving is everyone. We don't, we don't, first of all, we don't take any for ourselves. Um, and secondly, we are giving to soon to be, you know, whatever. It depends how, how, when we get, when we get to a hundred thousand a day, when, when we're giving $50 million a year, there'll be enough to give you more organizations, Holy you know? Crap. And, uh, you heard it here. We're going to give over $50 million a year. Boom. You'll see. It's going to happen. That's crazy. It's just a matter of how quickly. And the thing, the struggle is that everyone loves the idea, but if they don't act right away, they just forget. I cannot tell you how many people, just a Mosei Rosh Hashanah, someone stopped me in Shul and she apologized. I'm like, why? She said, I'm so sorry. It took so long to sign up for daily giving. This is someone in my Shul. Who's never, she, trust me, everyone in my Shul knows about daily giving, right? <laughs> She's like, she just, and I, I don't, you know, I don't judge. Like people have their reasons or whatever. And she was just saying, I'm sorry. It took so long. Why? She just forgot. It was like, she always intended. She's like, I intended to, I intended to a thousand times. I just yeah. didn't do it. I didn't take action. Why did 144 new people sign up every Rosh Hashanah? Because the same message they hear on every Rosh Hashanah, where they hear in February 2nd, you know, it means more. Cause you're like, you have that sense of like, okay, true. It's feel sucker. Like yeah. I can give $31 a month that I could do, you know? And so, so hopefully they will. And yeah. if, you know, and, and I, I tell you another story that happened recently that I think is um, just really meaningful to me personally. And that I, um, a while back, someone from that original email that I sent the first day of daily giving. So it was like a, a rel, like a, a relative, a, a friend of a relative, whatever. So it was like 10 months later, she signed up for daily giving. Um, for two dollars a day for the year, so she prepaid for you know seven hundred whatever dollars, and um, I called her up to thank her, and I said, by the way, why did you? you know, she's single. It's you know it's not nothing. Signed up, signed up for seven hundred something dollars, so she said I she was in her mid thirties, never been married, and she said yeah I signed up one for me and one dollar for my future shared. Wow. And she was engaged within just a couple months. Wow. wow. And so I told that story to a, a couple of rabbinim that I was trying to get them to speak about daily giving. And so all of a sudden I get a text maybe a month ago from Rabbi Ben Sion Klatsko. Is it Sion? I think yeah. he was, right? On your, no, 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 Oh, no. okay. You should have him on. He's amazing. He's holy id. Okay, holy id. So from Shabbat.com. Okay. Sure. And, and many other things. Rabbi Klatsko has done, helped a lot of ways yeah. besides Shabbat.com. That's his latest iteration of sure. helping Kla Israel. So um, he texts me that he got this, he forwarded a text straight from this woman from Chicago. I'm not going to give away any other details. But basically that she had a daughter in her late 20s um, who she had been davening for, for many, many years, dating, shidduch, shidduch dating for, you know, over like almost a decade. And um, she heard about this idea from my class go. So she, so she signed up for a dollar a day for her daughter. And then she signed up for another dollar a day for one of her daughter's friends who's also not married, you know. And uh, Rabbi Krohn has, he likes to talk about this also, how, you know, when you daven for someone else struggling with the same thing, so, so she did this and she said she signed up on May 13th and on May 20th, her daughter met her, what became her chassan. Wow. And so this is just, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I, I don't get to share these stories often with all the daily givers, but yeah. there's many stories like that. Just really, really special people, um, you know, that, that I take it as a huge responsibility. Look again, this, I might be on your show right now, but literally there's like, I have a lot of humble people around me that don't want to be here. Right. And not that I want to be here necessarily, but, um, but I will do anything shameless. I'll do anything shameless to get daily <laughs> givers, right? So, um, and God forbid. Thank you for this being is, This is a big schuss. Yeah. This is a big schuss, and I'm probably losing a lot of schar to being, you know, a lot of my schar is going out the window for being on Meaningful People. I hope not. That's not good marketing for us. Well, let, let's put it this way. Want to lose schar quick? Come yeah. on, Meaningful People <laughs> podcast. Because, because, on the because, of the honor, because the honor you're giving me to be on this podcast. But I truly feel that you guys have such a, you do have such an amazing, you do such an amazing job, and you guys inspire so many people, and you, thank God, grown your podcast to so, so large an audience that, who knows, you know, maybe, maybe people will listen, and, and somehow, something we've, what we all said, be inspired to take out the credit card, and um, like I said, when I walked in, and you asked me, was I nervous? Am I nervous? And I said, yeah, I'm very nervous, and I'm nervous because I feel that we're giving them this opportunity that five years, 10 years from now, one day when they go up to Shemayim, right? And they've done thousands and thousands and thousands of mitzvahs. Rav Gav, Rav Gav Friedman, a good friend of both of mine and Achi, a daily giver, you know, he Emma. said, he said, <laughs> he said, um, he, he, he made this, one of the first videos I ever made for daily giving. I don't know if you remember it. He made this video and he said, he said, one day when you go up to Shemayim and, and, and you go up there and they said, there's thousands and thousands of malachim behind you. 
And he says, what, what are these? He's like, oh, this is the person you saved their life. This is the person you, you helped shelter who was being beaten. This is the one you helped uh, with infertility. This is the one you helped cure cancer. This is the one you, you, you saved stem cells, right? And he says, what do you mean? I didn't do any of this. And he says, you did because years ago, you don't remember this because you unsubscribed. That's why you shouldn't unsubscribe. <laughs> but years ago, you signed up for daily giving. And so for years and years and years, you've been doing a mitzvah every single day. It takes no effort. It takes no time, but it's just a dollar a day. Wow. It's crazy. And hopefully the, the schar that you think you're losing is going to be gained back by that 22-year-old or 42-year-old that's sitting there thinking, you know what? I've had this idea in my head for 20 years. I had this idea for five years and I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to jump in and do it, whatever it is. But and before you do that idea, be sure to sign up for daily giving. <laughs> for because sure. if you don't do it right now, like right here, right, right now, right back. the chances of you doing it tomorrow decrease dramatically. I, I I think the reason is, I've thought about this a lot. And I think, first I thought it was just ADHD, right? Like we're all that have this little bit of ADD, like squirrel, oh, you're off to something mm -hmm. else. Like great idea. But I really truly think that Hashem made it difficult for us to give tzedakah. For sure. Mm. You know, and so you think that's a great idea. And then when it actually comes like later, you say, oh, come on, do it later. Even if, you, first of all, you, most people just forget. But then even the ones that remember, they're like, but I'm, but I'm paying so much tuition. Yeah, I'm like paying I, for my shul dues. I'm how many paying appeals? for my kids' camp. And I, right? Like, listen, let's let's be honest. The three, we, you know, it's expensive. Our lives are expensive, right? And we work really hard for our money, you know. And it's really difficult. And if it was so easy to give tzedakah, then we wouldn't get this car for it, right? And so, um, I I really see that it is difficult, and that's why we're at eleven thousand, not one hundred eleven thousand. I think that you're seeing that it's it's more difficult than you thought. Way, way and like I see, like a like there's a little bit of like an innocence that you had that, you know, it's no, like yeah. Maybe it's, it's, I remember speaking to some some like professional fundraiser when we were at like four hundred dollars a day, and I was telling her how frustrated I was, and like I I, I just was, I was like pulling my hair out. Why why are we? Why is this such a struggle? Right? Yeah. And um, she's like, "What you've done for it's like is incredible. You have no idea." And like I read it, like okay, but you know, so you like from that perspective, at this point, I do feel like tremendously blessed to be where we are you know i mean because you know think about it. We're, we're 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 bordering on like a sold out madison square garden of all giving a dollar a day Jonathan, like we're getting there you know no one else in the world has been able to do what you did we did lots of people lots of us yeah you know, thank god you know and uh and hopefully like i said we're, we're, when we're at you know not next cms shots but the cms shots after that or maybe this coming cms shots we're gonna yeah. break a hundred thousand right that wouldn't that be great why why not this is like a major it's in your hands listeners yeah. you have a big power this, this right is now. like a major ahava yisrael like episode and moment like just for like the talking about the organizations like what they do talking about the people that sign up and them signing up for other people and and the email addresses it's just like People are really awesome. And people, I think that people don't get enough credit for being awesome. We talk a lot about how people do stupid things. Or this guy did that. And this person did this thing. And people rock. People are awesome. People are, Jews are awesome. People, all people are awesome. Put that on a sweatshirt. People, people are, are awesome. awesome. <laughs> Shipped. People I really, it's, it's awesome. a good idea. You know, people sign up legally. Nishmas, a loved one. I love people. So many people sign up, yeah. you know, for a loved one. How, how special. You can't do a mitzvah once you're dead, but you can, you can give a dollar a day for someone you know, and do a mitzvah in their name every single day. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a huge success. Jonathan, you have, you have like a great responsibility. I'm jealous of the scar you have. Over $6 million have been given because of the work that you did, which is incredible. And probably a lot more than that. So um, it's the greatest honor I have. And Momo as well, I think, to have you here on this podcast and to share your story Hopefully it inspires people to give and inspire, it inspires people to do inspires people to know that people are awesome. You know, Indeed. you know, you guys, you guys are, are really inspiring too. I want to, I want to even just tell you, you don't, I never said this to you, but and knocking you that we've known each other for a couple of years. There's been lots of things that actually I, I wrote down that inspired me from meaningful people, but the episode with Rav Shalma Rush, mm -hmm. right? He said something about obviously Israel and I, 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 and obviously Israel is one of those mitzvahs that like I, I cling to, and I like, I, I, you know, and he even said, like, he, I believe if I'm right, this is what I got out of it. So I got out of it is that every day in my Shona Esra, I, I asked to, to work on my obvious Israel more mm -hmm. and that all Klai Israel should work on their obvious Israel and that I got from meaningful people. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that, that was never, that was never my radar before that episode. Right. So. Daven for Klai Israel was this thing. Daven right. for Klai Israel. Right. Daven for other Jews. Just. Right. 
to love Jews. Amazing. You might not like all of them, but you gotta love all of them. Exactly right. Yeah. Another T-shirt, Mo. Oh my Mama. gosh, my my printing press is just <laughs> like. There well. was a story that you referenced before. You said, "I'll tell you that story." I don't know if if we got back to it. Um. There's there's one other story that I was thinking about on the way here of telling. I'm not sure which one I referenced, but um, one of those other Mikam Israel moments. Uh, um, someone signed up for daily giving one day for two dollars a day, and it, and it failed. Which you know sometimes whatever for whatever reason it fails. I was still it was late at night. It was at nine thirty or something. I was still in my office, which is common. And um, for whatever reason, I don't usually do this because I have a staff of volunteers that will do this. But I at that moment, I don't know. I picked up the phone and I called the number, and this young like young kid's voice came on, and I said the name of what person signed up, and she's like, "Yeah, this is she." Clearly, couldn't have been more than twelve years old. So I said, "Did you just try to sign up for daily giving?" She said, "Yeah." I said, wow, that's incredible. And I was talking to her. I said, is your mother or father there? And she put her father on. She, he's, they're from Cleveland. And um, he told me this amazing thing. He has four daughters. And he has this special debit card. I think he said it's called Greenlight or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I didn't know here of it. And you could you could put money on for your kids. And you could say, just so you like, like my son's at MTA. So like he's, there's a lot of good restaurants right near MTA, mm -hmm. right? So like if, if I just gave him a debit card, like, like every week there'd be like 50 bucks gone of food, right? Mm -hmm. So you could like put how much he could spend on that or my kid doesn't drive yet, but like you could put for gas and this. So he tells me that for his four daughters, he, they all have their cards in different amounts based on their age. And one of the things they do, he's tzedakah on their card. So wow. that they, they, part of the, part of the cheshbon and what they're doing is they give tzedakah with the card. And she wanted to sign up for daily giving. And she wanted to do more than $2 a day. But he's like, but I told her, start with $2 a day. Wow. This is a 12-year-old, right? 11 or 12-year-old. Like, wow. Just incredible. What if, what if fail, though? Because <laughs> I think she thought it was just $2 I know why day, it failed. Probably. I know why it and failed. she didn't realize that it was, yeah. It's a horror, baby. No. So we can tell the story. So that we can we be inspire other story. people. Yeah. That's amazing. Again. People are free. Uh, people are. <laughs> I just really want to take that out. People are awesome. <laughs> people are really great. And Jonathan Donath, you're one of those people. Uh, really How awesome is the father and the mother of that of that twelve year old? Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. Seriously, dude. Yeah. You ha you know them? No, not personally. I know who they wow. are now because uh, Rabbi Ari Friedner, our CEO, is from Cleveland. So wow. he told me about them. Uh, <laughs> these yeah. are people. These are people around us that we don't even know. And gems. we're, 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 we're gems. from that conversation. This is, yeah. this is amazing. So, so he tells me. So he's. I was on the phone. It's me, this father, and the daughter, right? And we're talking. And he says, he tells his daughter, "Tell Doctor Donath what is the uh, the mantra that I always have been telling you and your sisters since you were like a little girl." And I'm like so curious. I'm thinking, what's she gonna say? And she's like, seems embarrassed. Like, why is she not telling me? She's embarrassed. So she doesn't want to say the words "I love you" to me, right? So he's like, "Tell him, tell him." So she goes. Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That's amazing, right? Because as parents, right, we all know that resilience is like the greatest gift you can give your children, right? So I, I really like this guy in Cleveland. I really, I need to be I don't know if we wear that on a sweatshirt, but like we'll try. <laughs> Right, but, but we'll you see. know, it's it's really important. Love is, you know, takes you, his very seriously. Takes, yeah. takes, is very, you know, and, and resilience is very important. So, yeah. Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. J. Guys, thank you for having me. Really, it really was an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Of course, the first thing you should be doing is just going to dailygiving.org. Like right now. Like, <laughs> because like, like... Like legit, we talked about how if you don't put it into action immediately... Then it's just gonna... And like this whole time of year, right? This whole reflective... If you're listening right when we drop this episode, it's Matzah Shabbos Shuvah yeah. right now. And this time is about like reflecting and seeing what we want to have in our life. Mm -hmm. What more can we incorporate just like really tending to our spirituality. Yeah. And if we want to have more of that and more meaning in our life, then we take action immediately. Absolutely. And now's your time. Now's the time. So open that URL and uh, dailygiving.org. Go help them out because Teshuvah Tzfilet Tzedakah. It's, it's that time of year. Something else I wanted to mention is we have a new podcast, part of the Meaningful Minute Network, and that is called The Daily Thread. It's with myself and my dad, my father, how are you, though? We sit down every weekday morning. That's a new podcast. Four days a week. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Four days a week, Nahi. <sighs> four day work week. Wow. You know what they say. And we every morning we put out an episode. So far, we've done two of them. So you could go ahead and search the daily thread. And uh, the link to that will be in the description over here as well. And um, maybe we'll just put a little teaser right now. 
what that sounds like. Just an update for people. Yes, Miami Boys Choir is still trending. They're still going viral. It's pretty crazy. The I honestly, is why? What is the appeal? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think that there's just stuff going on that's beyond our scope of understanding. Like, I mean, you were you were in a choir, right? Oh, that's not public. That's, that's not, not public. That's not, you weren't in the Miami Boys Choir, but not public. One of your brothers was in the Miami Boys. He was. Choir. Yochan was in the Miami Boys Choir, but it, it doesn't make any sense. The you were in a choir. You don't want to. Uh, no, I don't. I think I, I just skipped over that. that. <laughs> we'll block that. We'll block that out. Um, 